This video was sponsored by Bluestacks. Video was sponsored by Bluestacks. And if you don't know what Bluestacks is, it is a completely free emulator that you can use to run Azure Lane and other mobile games on your computer instead. If you have ever run into lackluster issues with your phone regarding its performance or overheating or anything, well, you don't have to worry about that with Bluestacks because you're running it on your computer instead, which could potentially get you much better performance as well. I personally use it to go and run Azure Lane and to record my YouTube videos for it, so I can definitely vouch for it. If you are interested in this, there is a affiliate link in the description and the pinned comment below, and it will actually give me some support too, so I can continue to keep making these videos for you guys. Peace out! Hey guys, it's me, Ander, or FBI Open Up over on the Lexington server, and due to a surprising amount of people commenting regarding a Perseus gear guide video, here it is. Um, but shout out to this Baltimore Live 2D because I, I really want to buy it. This is like actually amazing. Anyway, in this video, I'll be talking about Perseus's role as an amazing healer as well as her skills, and of course her recommended gear loadout. With that being said, let's get started. Onto some Perseus gear basics. Perseus is a super rare light carrier obtainable from the recent Aurora Noctis event. To put her playstyle in simple terms, She's just like Unicorn, being a healing light carrier, but Perseus has bigger boobs, bigger skill text paragraphs, and most importantly, the capability of much bigger heals. Her main role in the fleet is not to deal the most damage, even though Perseus definitely can, but instead it's to keep your team alive through her many healing skills. Her first skill, Mercury's Talaria, is a very interesting and new take on a carrier. Instead of having to wait for her airstrikes to charge up like a traditional carrier, Perseus actually starts off the battle with two preloaded airstrikes. To balance this out, she has a 90% longer reload time for any airstrikes afterwards. When she launches an airstrike, she will heal the Vanguard fleet for 7% of their max HP per airstrike. In comparison, Unicorn heals the Vanguard fleet for 8% of their max HP, which is 1% better than Perseus, but do keep in mind that Unicorn only has one airstrike at a time, while Perseus already has two preloaded. In addition, unlike Unicorn who only heals the Vanguard fleet, Perseus also heals her backline for 3.5% of their max HP, which is a major advantage of using Perseus over Unicorn. With Perseus' two preloaded airstrikes, that means she will be able to heal a monstrous 14% of max HP of the Vanguard fleet and 7% of the max HP of the backline at the very start of every single battle. This is really really nice, and it will definitely heal your vanguard and your backline for a ton of HP during these sorties. Onto Perseus' second skill, Athena's Catapult, she gets a very nice guaranteed airstrike every 12 seconds. This special airstrike comes in three different flavors, the Sea Hornet, which is a super nice fighter plane, the TBF Avenger, which is a good torpedo bomber, or the Fairy Firefly, which is a dive bomber. You can think of this skill similarly to Saratoga's signature skill, Doko Miteru no Kochi Dayo, also known as Artillery Cover, as they both have very similar activation times and uses. Saratoga's skill activates every 10 seconds, while Athena's Catapult, which is Perseus's skill, activates every 12 seconds. These skills help their respective carrier deal a bit of extra damage, helping with clearing mob fleets, and are always a very welcome addition. Finally, for Perseus' third skill, it is called Waters of Sticks. Her hangar size is increased to 3, which means that you will be able to hold up to 3 of her airstrikes at a time during battle. Additionally, per Perseus also gets another healing skill similar to the Repair Toolkit, where she heals all ships in the fleet by an extra 1% of their max HP every 20 seconds. Now, also, she gets another healing skill, where she is able to heal the other fleets in battle, healing any surviving ships in the other fleets by 3% of their max HP after 20 seconds. In conclusion, Perseus has a lot to offer through her massive healing capabilities. If you have her from the or recent Aurora Noctis event, she's a great fit for any fleet, and I would definitely suggest using her, since she can basically be used in everything. Now on to Perseus' general gear loadout, first off we're going to take a look at her fighter plane. Since Perseus is centered around getting her heal out faster, 
she would want a plane generally with a faster launch time. Overall, the best for this is going to be the F4U Corsair Pirate Squadron. You can buy this from the Core Data Shop for 800 core, with the fastest launch time at 8.8 .8 seconds per wave. Now overall, it's basically the most solid and well-rounded choice in all of the fighter planes, since it has really nice damage, a really really useful skill, and a super fast launch time. You can never go wrong with this. Now, if you don't mind trading out a slightly longer reload time for the highest damage out of all fighter planes, then the Sea Hornet is for you. It has 1000 pound bombs instead of 500 pound bombs, making it deal a lot more damage, but it does have a slightly slower reload time. Now from here, these next couple of gold fighters all have the same 2x500 pound bombs, so it's mostly down to whoever has the faster reload time. With that being said, the next best is going to be the Golden Repu, with a reload time of 9 seconds per wave. Next is going to be the Golden Seafang, with 9.14 seconds per wave. And if you're wondering about the brand new event plane in this, the Kawanishi N1K3A Shidenkai 2, it's coming at 9.23 seconds per wave, and it's overall just the same as the other three golden planes that I'm mentioning right here. So after that, it's going to finally be the Golden Hellcat with 9.4 seconds per wave. If you don't have any of these, you can always use the budget-friendly purple option, the regular purple F4U Corsair, which you can farm from 3-4. Perseus's next slot is going to be her Torpedo Bomber. Now the best in slot, if you want the most damage, is going to be the TBM Avenger. It has the highest Torpedo Bomber damage out of all of its competitors, and it has a really really good skill that increases the damage done against enemy battleships and battlecruisers by 3% while also giving a 60% chance to inflict flooding against any battleship, battlecruiser, or aviation battleship that is hit by this aircraft for 9 seconds. This plane's stats and skills greatly outweigh their slightly slower reload time. Now for anyone that does not have the TBM Avenger or just does not care about the fastest reload time, you could use the more friendly Golden Barracuda as a substitute, with very similar performance and a much faster reload time. Now you could use the Gold Swordfish, like what I'm doing right here, if you want your Perseus to be more support based, as this plane that you can obtain from the Core Data Shop for 800 core has a medium reload time in the middle of the TPM Avenger and the Gold Barracuda, and it has a super useful skill that decreases the speed of enemies hit by the aircraft by 60%. So this is more of a support kind of loadout, and I kind of like this, so I'm going to be using this one instead. Just like any other light carrier, their anti-air gun slot does not matter too much. You could really throw on any gold anti-air gun and be perfectly fine. I always would recommend the Golden Roomba, also known as the Twin 113mm as it has the biggest range out of all anti-air guns, so it's really really solid no matter what you're doing. So you can get this from 7.2, 11.4, and gold Royal Navy tech boxes. For those that don't have any gold anti-air guns yet, then the best purples are going to be the 127mm mounted AA gun and the purple Roomba. You can find the purple Roomba from 7.2 and 11.4, and the 127 mounted gun from 4-4, 12-4, and purple and gold Sakura Empire tech boxes. Finally, for aux gears, carriers and light carriers have extremely straightforward and limited choices for their aux gears, so this will be a very short section. If you have it, you should be running double gold steam catapult, or if you're running low on gold steam catapults and don't have enough general parts, you can use a gold steam catapult and a homing beacon, or really any of the other choices, such as a purple aviation oil tank, or this 100-150 aviation fuel. Now, the gold catapult is always recommended as the number one priority, as it is amazing for any carrier, and Perseus is no different. It provides a massive damage boost to her, with a 100 plus aviation stat, and a bit of extra HP is always welcome. Now, the homing beacon is very recommended, as it gives a very nice decrease in airstrike loading time by 4%, so that is always really useful, especially since Perseus has a super super long reload time. Now, if you want 
or just don't have any of the other ones, the purple aviation oil tank is a pretty solid option, and the purple steam catapult is basically a worse version of the purple aviation oil tank, so use that purple steam catapult if you have none of the above. Now onto the battle showcase, we'll be doing some Dreamwaker's Butterfly event stages, so for this we'll be doing HT6. Now for the mob fleet we've got Perseus right here, and for the vanguard we've got Shapayev. Now for the boss fleet we have Saratoga Retrofit, Essex, and in the vanguard we have Sirius and San Diego. Getting into the first battle, we're up against a submarine siren, and there is Perseus's two preloaded airstrikes that did absolutely nothing because the siren's underwater. Now, 99% of the time, you're probably not going to be against a submarine, so Perseus's airstrikes are probably going to be more useful. Waters of Sticks procced, so that'll heal a very small amount, and Athena's catapult, don't forget, is going to proc every 12 seconds, and yeah, obviously Perseus is not going to get MVP, since both of her preloaded airstrikes just went way over that submarine siren's head. Now onto the second battle, we're up against a siren that's not a submarine, so as you can see, Perseus's preloaded airstrikes actually ended up hitting, so that'll be really nice. Athena's catapult procced, looks like we've gotten some fairy fireflies. Blessing of the butterfly, keep in note is the map gimmick thingy, you'll see that on the top left corner. So that's actually not because I have a Shinano, it's just because of the map gimmick. And, and these butterflies barely do any damage, so they're really just for show. But you know, Shinano's trying her best. Athena's catapult is procking once again, and with that it looks like the battle should be wrapped up very soon. And let's see who got MVP. So we've got Perseus as MVP, and that's really nice. For the third battle, we're up against another Siren. As you can see, all of that damage that Shapayev received from the last battle was completely healed up by Perseus, right there with her two preloaded airstrikes, which ended up healing Shapayev for 350 health per airstrike, which totals for a very, very solid 700 HP recovered at the very start of battle. So right there, Athena's catapult. And it looks like this Siren is about to die already, so that's pretty nice. And yeah, I do have a Perseus skin on, so um, <laughs> don't mind the weird looking planes. <laughs> the MVP is going to go to Shapayev. Now, enough with the Sirens, let's go and do a couple of regular mob fleets. This is a 3 triangle mob fleet, and it looks like this should be a little bit more smoother since Perseus will have the capability to hit a lot more ships now. If of course her airstrikes reload in time. <laughs> we'll get there. Athena's catapult will just kind of fill in all that empty void in which Perseus is going to be reloading. So unless Shapayev just completely annihilates them, there is another airstrike. So yeah, that is the first battle against a normal mob fleet. Shapayev gets MVP once again. Onto the fifth battle, you can see that Perseus just healed Shapayev right up to full health once again. And they're just cruising along. It looks like none of them have taken barely any damage so far. There's an Athena's catapult proc. Blessing of the butterfly. A very nice all out assault. Waters of Styx proc to go and heal Shapayev just a little bit more. Another Athena's catapult for some extra damage while we wait for that reload for the airstrike. And the battle is finished. So that's battle number five. With Perseus getting the MVP. This is battle number six with no ammo. Um, it shouldn't really be too big of a problem. Looks like they're still cutting through these ships with no problem at all. Oh, okay, well, that was unexpected. Well, that was really fast. Um, yeah, so that's battle number six, I guess. And finally, here is the boss fleet for the boss battle. You've got, once again, Saratoga Retrofit and Essex in the back, and San Diego and Sirius in the front. 
and why not? Let's go and throw in our submarines too. This boss siren is a little bit annoying because once it hits like 25-ish health, well, once the bar on the top hits 25, it like comes invincible for a couple seconds. That's a little bit annoying, but it's no problem at all. Actually, it's 27. It's somewhere around the 25-ish mark. And then it becomes invincible, and now it's not invincible. So now it's just gonna die. There's so much stuff happening on the screen, but it barely does any damage. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. That's the boss battle. The MVP was going to go to none other than Essex. Solid. With that battle showcase finished, that will conclude my gear guide for Perseus. As always, if you found this information helpful, consider dropping a like and subscribing. Don't forget to press the notification bell for my future uploads as well. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions that need to be answered, and I'll try my best to reply. If you're interested, you can always join my Discord server if you need any advice or just want a place to relax. That'll be all for this video, so I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!